Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video we're going to have a look back at the 10 games that got the best scores on the channel for last month, the month of course of January. We'll be starting with the game that got the lowest score for the month and of course ending with the game that got the highest as well as looking at everything in between. Links to all 10 reviews will be in the top pinned comment if you are interested as well as links to reviews that didn't quite make the cut for this video and some other bits and bobs that are relevant. Please do feel free to peruse at your leisure. Okay, with all that said, what got the highest scores on the channel last month? Let's find out. Starting with the game that got the 10th highest score for the month then, this was Collection of Saga Final Fantasy Legend. This is a collection of three Game Boy games, Final Fantasy Legend 1, 2 and 3, which are actually the beginnings of the Saga series and were rebranded when they made their way to the West for a bit of brand recognition. These turn-based RPGs do have some interesting mechanics. You don't level up in the traditional way, not in the first two games anyway, with each of the different races leveling in a different way. Whilst the games are showing their age, with this applying to the first one in particular as you would expect, the second one does improve and refine some of the first one's ideas, and the third one had a different development scene behind it, and this is quite evident in the game's mechanics. The main issue really is the encounter rate which is just so incredibly high when it comes to random battles, although I will give the games credit in that they had the ability even back in the day to be able to save at any time which was a nice feature. As well as that the collection itself is just a bit lacklustre, there aren't things like digital versions of the original instruction manuals, little things like that that do make a difference I think. On the whole though, still a fun time if you have any sort of nostalgia for these games and it got a switch up score of 74%. In ninth place for the month then we had Double Dragon Neon. Now this game came out originally back in 2012 and acted as a, a reboot of sorts of the original Double Dragon game from 1987. It starts off in a very similar way then takes the story in quite an outlandish direction and it's definitely not afraid to have a bit of fun at its own expense. The game itself plays very well and is a good beat em up. It has an interesting and quite deep fighting system where you find new moves by way of tape cassettes and the more of the same cassette you find, the more powerful that move can become. And there are also passive abilities that you can equip, but you can only equip one of each type, so you'll need to swap them out as the situation arises. Where it's let down slightly is that it's not quite as fluid in its animation as newer games such as Streets of Rage 4, and this does affect the gameplay to an extent, but this is a minor quibble, and the music in particular is absolutely fantastic, it's got a great soundtrack. Whilst not the best beat em up on the Switch, to be fair it does have some very strong competition, it's definitely worth playing, and got a Switch up score of 76%. In 8th place for the month was an action platformer called Golden Force. This has quite a lovely pixel art style and takes place on a variety of very appealing locations and sees you being able to pick between 4 playable characters you can even play in co-op. The game is incredibly difficult but does tend to cross the line between difficult and unfair on a few occasions which is a shame. Plus the four playable characters all play exactly the same despite looking very different and it does feel like they missed a bit of a trick here giving them their own movesets. It was still an enjoyable game though with some collectibles to find thrown in for good measure as long as you can deal with the frustrating moments as and when they come and it got a switch up score of 78%. A seventh place for the month was a game called Kronos Before the Ashes. This serves as a prequel to the game Remnant from the Ashes and is a third person RPG with souls like gameplay and a really interesting aging mechanic. Basically every time you die your character gets a bit older and therefore a bit wiser being able to learn particular magic spells say for example but at the same time as you get older your body gets weaker. It's an interesting take on quite a familiar formula and does work very well. On the more negative side there were some visual or performance issues plus it is a bit pricey for what you're getting but that's not to take away from the fact that it's a good game and it got a switch up score of 78%. In 
In at number 6 was a game called Disjunction. This is an ARPG with a heavy emphasis on stealth and it could be said is quite reminiscent of the earlier Metal Gear Solid games. You need to take down every enemy on the floor of a building with stealth being your main focus but you can use weapons as well and blast your way out of trouble. The choices you make within the game will impact the gameplay further on and it's all brought together with a cyberpunk inspired pixel art style. Perhaps the gameplay is a little too biased towards stealth, which kind of questions why they gave you the option to use both, but there is a lot of fun to be had here if you have the patience because it's very very difficult and it got a switch up score of 82%. In 5th place then we had Cyber Shadow. This is a retro inspired action platformer which takes clear inspiration from some of the NES classics such as Ninja Gaiden, Shadow of the Ninja, Shatterhand, even things like Castlevania and Batman. Another game that's brutally difficult but is very fair, it pays homage to its inspiration both in terms of its graphical style and its control system which is assigned to just two buttons. This is a blessing and a curse in some respects as the amount of new moves that you learn through the game means you end up having to press a direction on the d-pad and the action button and this does start to feel a bit clunky as you go on. That being said though I very much enjoyed this game and will return to it time and again I'm sure and it got a switch up score of 84%. Coming in in 4th place for the month then was Scott Pilgrim vs The World The Game Complete Edition. Now I'll be honest when I gave this game the score that I gave it, the score that you'll see in a moment, about 2 weeks into the month I didn't expect it to be sitting at number 4 by the time this video came round but there you go. This is a remaster of the classic beat em up based on the Scott Pilgrim graphic novels and releasing originally around about the same time as the movie in 2010. Its gameplay seems to fuse what made arcade brawlers back in the day so great with a host of enemies on screen at any one time, with aspects that were brought into console beat-em-ups over the years, most evident in games such as the Kunio Kun series, River City Ransom being one of the most famous, with those light RPG elements. This complete edition includes all of the DLC that was released for the game back in the day and it sells for a very competitive price. If you like your beat-em-ups this is definitely one of the best on the Switch and it got a Switch up score of 88%. In third place was our most recent review of the month, this was a game called Gods Will Fall. In this game you take control of a whole clan as you explore an overworld map. Every so often you will encounter a dungeon and at this point you can send one of your clan in to try and defeat a host of enemies, culminating in a boss battle against a god. The game uses a very intuitive combat system which includes a clever parry move although some of the dungeons do use a few too many platforming sections which can lead to some frustration. Talking of frustration, the boss battles themselves are unbelievably difficult and the game as a whole will cause some people some serious rage moments for sure, but when you do beat them, the sense of achievement is almost unbridled. If you lose, that clan member will become imprisoned and you'll need to send another one in, and depending on who it was that was lost, the other clan member's stats will change. It's a very clever system in what is quite a refreshing game. It does have a roguelite nature and if you don't like that in your games it won't change your mind but on the whole it's a fresh take and a very good game and it got a switch up score of 89%. Into the top two then and coming in at second place for the month was Atelier Riser 2, Lost Legends and The Secret Fairy. This sequel to Atelier Riser, a game that is also on the Switch, certainly improves on its predecessor and it does this while creating a beautiful world to explore and having a very enjoyable combat system. When you factor in the lush visuals and the beautiful music, you have a package that's an absolute joy to play. You may have to acclimatise to some slightly confusing tutorials at the start of the game, but once you are past this you have an extensive JRPG experience to enjoy and it got a switch up score of 90%.
and coming in in first place for the month, a game that kind of come out of nowhere to be perfectly honest, this was Rhythm Fighter. This game, as you would expect from the title, is a rhythm game come fighting beat em up, I guess, where you must move in sync with the music in order to time your attacks perfectly and therefore have a chance of defeating the slew of enemies that appear on the screen. It has quite lovely presentation and each enemy has a different look and feel to them and will need you to perform moves differently, again according to that musical beat, for you to defeat them and move on. As well as that presentation and being a rhythm game, the most important part of it, the music is absolutely top notch and really does bleed into the gameplay. Just to complete the package, it's also very well priced and is a bit of a bargain in all honesty for the amount of gameplay you're getting. It's always nice to be pleasantly surprised by a game you weren't necessarily expecting a huge amount from and it's also great when a game manages to merge two different genres together so seamlessly and this game knocked it out of the park on both counts. Rhythm Fighter got a very impressive switch up score of 91%. So there you have it, there are the 10 games that got the best scores in the month of January 2021 to make it into this, the first of our roundup videos for this new year. Please do remember to leave a like if you like what you've just seen. Did you buy any of these games and if so, have you enjoyed them during the month? Was there another game that you bought or played that would have scored highly enough for you to make this list? Please do let us know in the comment section below. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Don't forget to check out those links in the top in comment for all of the reviews mentioned in this video. Take care, stay safe of course and until next time, happy gaming.